Dr. Stone may just be the best science fiction anime I've ever seen, which probably isn't saying a lot because I have never seen a science fiction anime. Like, most everything I see is a fantasy. So seeing something that's very uh, oriented around the real world and real world concepts like chemistry and uh, survival, that's radically different than what I'm used to. And maybe I'm just giving Dr. Stone this much pro so much attention purely because of that. But uh, I don't think there's any denying, dude. I I'm sure there are other things like this, but I don't think there is no denying that I am very much enjoying my time with the series so far. I am about four episodes in, and I'm already introduced to these characters, uh, this setting, this world, this uh, this core conflict, and I am already incredibly, incredibly engaged with it. I am, I am so so impressed by what the what the show has done with uh, such few characters in such a short amount of time. Like you really do get the impression, you really do, you really do feel involved with what these characters are doing and how they're going about uh, trying to rebuild civilization. And uh, I went into Doctor Stone not knowing a whole lot about it, so um, watching this for the first time and uh, just being. <laughs> Watching the apocalypse takes place, like this weird-ass apocalypse where everyone on the planet turns to stone and uh, the natural order of the world sort of reestablishes itself. Like nature takes over again over the next 3,700 years until the heroes wake up again by some um, by some, me by some uh, means they don't properly understand. That is incredible. Like it, it would be so easy to sort of um, – give it a sort of a, a cop out explanation as to why they um as to why it happened as to why they uh, managed to escape their stone prison but really um the fact that it just happened and they have to deal with it in such a uh, in such a great way it's it's so so engaging so so wonderful and i'm so so excited as to what's happened next and, and a big reason for that um is just how much care the story takes to really emphasize just what these characters have to do to survive not only to survive but to rebuild civilization so like they're talking about stuff like the stone age and uh the invention of iron um components of uh, materials they can use to improve their lives making gunpowder um uh, making soap like, the really basic things that you sort of take for granted uh, would have normally taken for granted in a, uh, a non-disease-infested world. Um, taking ideas like that and making a very, very compelling story arc out of it. Now, it would be very easy to sort of emphasize just how terrible this all is and how horrible... Um, and how horrible this, this apocalypse was, but... Uh, one of the really engaging things about this show, and, and one of the things I think really makes it downright inspirational, perhaps on par with something like Hajime no Ippo, um, which is more about fitness, but one of the things that makes this show so, so interesting is that the characters aren't really overwhelmed by the situation like they're just like okay this is the world now and now we gotta live with it now we gotta use the power of science to succeed and yeah you could argue that well it's kind of ridiculous that there are no like libraries or resources to learn from in this world it is kind of ridiculous that uh, Senku, the super genius protagonist, just happens to know, you know, the components of pretty much everything you could name, right? You know, like I said, he knows how to make soap, he knows how to make gunpowder, he knows how to do, like, all this crazy shit, right? Uh, it's, it would be really easy to just sort of write him off as, like, a deus, a deus ex machina character who's going to single-handedly rebuild civilization, but no. Like, we get... We get a really interesting antagonist. We get a really, really good, um, a really good conflict of us struggling to gather these components. Like it, it, it's it's a process to even collect things or even a, a build, uh, put them together the right way. And uh, Senku does make mistakes. Um, there, there's a part in episode four where he's like he's reassuring uh, their girl, the girl that they're. 
uh, there is no way this bomb is going to go off because uh, the metal in stone is what sets off the uh, the flint, right? To uh, to set the fire, to set off the explosion. And uh, it turns out that he forgets that this specific rock can, does have metal in it. And so it, it does set off the gunpowder. And he doesn't let him get that down. It, it's, it's really, really interesting uh, that he's... It really emphasizes the scientific method, and, and uh, this is something maybe a bunch of scientific, uh, a scientific uh, plebs may not be aware of. But like, it's necessary to fail in science in order to come to a proper conclusion, right? In how to best handle situations, and like, it best to best way to evaluate your results and stuff like that. Uh, Senku's really, really great at really. Um, Balancing being an over-the-top anime super genius and being a relatable, interesting character. He's always talking about, like, you know, logic and being illogical, sort of like Spock. And, and then you sort of see in really, really compelling ways just how much he cares about the people around him. Even though he, uh, rather like a Sandire, doesn't really admit it. Like, uh, that is, I think, the most special thing about the show so far, or one of the most special things, um, the relationship between the characters, right? Uh, the male characters in particular. The girl hasn't really done anything yet, uh, yet. Uh, the end of episode four seems to make me think that there's going to be more to her later. It just hasn't gotten around to it yet. But um, it's so, so interesting to me just how much Senku values and respects his friend Taiju, right? Taiju is just a sort of ordinary, everyman, uh, strong guy who uh, has a crush on a girl. Like, he, he's a sort of normie character, right? And it would be really easy to, like, for Senku to sort of, like, uh, shit on this guy and, like, talk down to him and, like, really emphasize just how much, uh, how much better he is. No! Like, Senku understands. I need to be working on science. Like, I need to be doing this. I, I need to be playing to my strengths all the time. Like, I need to be making new things. I need to be building things. I need to be, like, constructing objects. And I need you to help me getting materials. And you do get the impression that, like, even though they're radically different from each other, they have an incredible amount of, like, respect and love for each other like legitimate like fr brotherly love and, and and like it's not really something that's emphasized a lot but you do see that like taiju has been like in senku's life for years like help uh, going to the store to help him pick up materials for his like uh, at home science experiments it's protecting him from bullies and, and stuff like that like um taiju isn't a scientist but he doesn't need to be like there is a place in this world for normie people you, you know what i mean <laughs> and um and uh, senku understands and appreciates that and even even goes out of his way when he doesn't need to to sort of uh give taiju what he wants which is to uh bring back his uh beloved almost soon to be gf you, you know what i mean uh <laughs> It's um, it's a really, really incredible show. Like, right from the get-go, I was impressed with it. And uh, that feeling only got stronger with pretty much every show. Like, every single episode so far uh, of the first four have been absolute 10 out of 10 bangers. Well, maybe we're like 9 out of 10. Because there were, like, weird anime moments. Like, I, I do wish... Uh, the show was a bit more grounded in reality. Like, you have this one guy in episode two who's, like, out running boars and, like, s snapping, like, birds out of the air. Like, that's kind of, that's kind of ridiculous. It really kind of is. And, uh, it's, that, it's to emphasize just uh, what kind of person he is, which is an incredible character. Don't get me wrong. Like, top ten anime antagonists for sure. Well, would have been top ten anime antagonists if they just fleshed it out more, like, padded it out more, like, uh, it would have been a better antagonist than Griffith, like, I I'm being completely serious here, if they had actually allowed this character time to sort of, like, fit in with the group before sort of, uh, deciding to go his own path, and his own path is fascinating, you know what I mean? It is incredibly compelling, and they just, <sighs> it still works, but, but I do wish... It's such a good villain because you legitimately did want them to get along. Like, this is the first time I've ever seen an anime show, an anime, 
where a character betrays the others and you not only understand his motivations and why he's still attached to the main characters, shows some attachment to the main characters, but why the main characters are still attached to him because they're, they're against each other, but they're still seemingly all they have in the world. You know, in a weird, twisted way. Like, they sort of do need each other. And, uh, um... And, like, the guy even says, um, uh, Senku agrees. If we had met in the world before, we would have been good friends. The instant I heard that, like, I completely believed it. Like, it is... It's amazing. Like, it was straight up really, really amazing. And, uh... There, there are countless countless moments where I was just like, this is possibly one of the best shows I've ever seen in my life. Possibly. Um, we'll, we'll have to see um, if that holds up. Like, that's my main concern right now. Like, are they going to be able to continue delivering this level of quality going forward? And I suppose it's possible that it might not. I, I've heard stories, uh, my all-time favorite Yu Yu Hack, uh, anime, Yu Yu Hack a show, it goes to shit about halfway through. Like, I don't like the second half of that anime. Uh, I I still love the first half, like, to bits, and I, I plan on revisiting it, but uh, the second half, no, no thank you. And, and I'm concerned that Dr. Stone is going to go through the same uh, procedure. I, I'm really concerned, like, where is it going to go from here? Like, I, I legitimately, more than anything, like, I legitimately don't know. Like, I legitimately have no idea what they're going to do next, how they're going to do it, how the characters are going to grow from here. Like, I'm coming up with all sorts of ideas for, like, character relationships and, like, ways for them to progress uh, in science. And um, now, with episode four, uh, we, we now know that there are other people out there, which, uh, honestly, I'm kind of curious as to why they didn't find traces of people in the entire span of time. They've been awake already, but whatever. I'll, I'll take it. Uh... It's such a compelling idea, and it's realized so, so well. I'm a, I'm a creator myself, and I can recognize, like, really true, true creativity and true, like, genius when I see it. And I do think this is probably, probably, probably an example of that, or at least the early parts of it. Um, again... I think everyone in the uh, mangaka industry, uh, in the manga industry, are extremely talented people, right? But usually, if the series goes to shit, like, if they stop, like, uh, if the quality goes down, it's because of the scheduling. Like, it's because they have to, like, update regularly, you know what I mean? Like, weekly or, like, almost weekly. That's ridiculous. That is crushing for most people. And, and I do think that... Uh, I do think that imp that impacts the quality of pretty much every manga you can think of. Uh, Dragon Ball, Bleach. Um, I believe Yu Yu Hakusho as well. Um, there's a good reason why certain certain things get um, lose quality as they go on. Is because the creators simply get burnt out, and uh, there's nothing they can do about it. Especially if they're making these super super long uh, multi year multi-year long stories and uh dr stone is still i actually saw it on the on the shonen jump app which i do have and i did look at it a little bit it it, it seems to be relatively newer like um younger even than my hero academia which i which started in like what 2012 so it, i would say this started in like what 2014 2015 like relatively recently right and uh i'm definitely 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 thinking that I might be a big fan of this. I I think this might be a great show, um, assuming assuming that um, the quality maintains. Like that's really my only concern. Like when I'm when the only thing I'm concerned about is like, oh, are they going to keep up the quality going forward? You know, you know that I'm absolutely blown away by what they're doing here. I am incredibly impressed by what I've seen of Doctor Stone so far, and I cannot wait to see more.